I don't think he's saying this with arrogance. And actually, I think there's a, a, a quite a lot of humility in this, because I think one of the things that the atheists forgot, and this I think is an important point, is that they were all smart people. They're all genuinely smart people. And they forgot that actually half of the population are not smart, uh, not even average, uh, lower than average, in fact, which meant that, in fact, uh, as David says here, um, the masses yearned to be told what to think, not the freedom to learn and do skepticism. Uh, that is actually a statement that contains uh, quite a few assumptions and really comes from a position of privilege, doesn't it? Um, because I've, I, my, my family are working class. I've known, I've got lots of friends and family who are working class. Uh, and I was lucky enough to be uh, middle class because my father went to the RAF. But it was, it's evident that when he says it's not, it's what they, they yearn to be told what to think, not the freedom to learn and read and do skepticism. Well, it's an uncomfortable thing to think about, but you have to have a certain level of intelligence to be able to grasp certain arguments. And if you aren't intelligent, then it's not necessarily that you yearn to be told what to think. It's that David is assuming that everyone is as smart as he is. And there is going to be a large segment of the population that just simply isn't academically minded. They aren't people who are doing well cognitively, but they may, you know, and, and, and when you say that, it makes it sound like that person is somehow inferior or a failure or something like that. And that's not what I'm saying. I know lots of smart people who are not good people. And I know lots of people who are not smart people who are good people and are successful through the use of their hands, through the use of doing things that are real and physical and manual and actually useful to the world. So I don't want people to think I'm in any way pouring scorn or anything like that. Yeah, I, I sorry, I just want to step in here real yeah, quick sure. to clarify because I think it's important here. So I hear what you're saying, but most of the people who were on the front lines of adopting this were the most learned people, the most academically minded people, the most mm -hmm. quote unquote skeptical people. Who they are the people who were at the forefront of falling for this. And the people who are arguably most resistant to this were people who are not those people who were not academically yeah. gifted, who were not placed in this position. I don't think that people are not intelligent enough is really an explanation for what happened here. No, no, that's not what I'm trying to say. What, what I mean is uh, the, the people who are on the lower end of the bell curve are not inclined to read and do skepticism, right? They're not actually very bothered about that. They've got, you know, things going on in their lives that they want to worry about. Uh, and so what David did is applied the template of himself to the, the broader population and assumed that they would just all be like him because at base he is a liberal and that is the, the very root liberal assumption is that all human beings are the same. And what he's arrived at is the discovery that in fact actually they're not. There are lots of differences between human beings and IQ is one of those differences. And so what he's interpreting in a rather dismissive way there, sort of like, well, they, they don't want the freedom to learn and read and think, is a sort of cognitive privilege and assumption that everyone would want to get to that point. And actually that's just not true. Uh, they don't desire it. And even if they did, you know, maybe they wouldn't be capable of it. And even if they were, people have a plurality of interests. And so they attacked religion on materialist grounds, uh, have destroyed the public reputation of religion, and now find themselves looking at the void being filled, as he says, by woke ideology, which, as you said, is absolutely a form of religion, because it has a comprehensive, totalizing uh, worldview that it's trying to explain every single thing from. Now, you know, I'm not trying to cast aspersions on religion but the the fact of the matter and he makes a good point that it's like look this is a religion without church now so it's not even violating the law when it's being put into schools put into uh the const uh, the the government and whatnot in america so it's kind of a bear trap that the new atheist stepped into that he is recognizing has caught his leg and it i think comes from a bit of hubris actually um but this is the position that they're in I think it comes from something a little more important, which is a complete, if not a complete denial, an absolute scorn for human nature. Um, 
this is a this I, is... i'd be more charitable i'd be more charitable i i, w- I, I would not but that's fine <laughs> I, <laughs> You're more I, I, I understand and, and as as a former new atheist speaking to a catholic I can understand why you wouldn't be more charitable to them. Um, to be fair, but, I'm Southern Baptist, but I understand what you're saying. Right, okay. But I, they thought they were doing the right thing. Sure, of course. They, they really thought they were. And yeah. they thought they had all of the answers. And you are you are right that it's hubris. And, uh, but I, 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 wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to impute malice, right? It's, it, it's not... I would I wouldn't say malice, but I would say and there's there's an important thing here. Um, when you say humanity is not as enlightened enough to kind of embrace what I embrace, hmm. you're sitting like right in the middle of the bell curve meme, right? <laughs> like hmm. like Grug is at the bottom saying we need religion, and then yeah. like somewhere Aquinas is on the other end, and yeah. you're sitting in the middle saying why can't everyone just be as rational as me, right? That um, that is kind of the new atheist position, yeah. Right, right, and and so it's not just that people embraced a didn't get the point and embraced a new religion. It's that new atheists were too much in denial about the nature of reality to understand that the metaphysical is real, and spirituality is an aspect of human life, and your inability or refusal to interact with that does not make you a better person or a more enlightened person that those, than those that do. And I think that's kind of what's being revealed here is like, oh, well, we, we destroyed the church that was already there, but we just empowered another church because the masses couldn't go without their precious opiate. And so now we're stuck with something even worse than what we destroyed. And yeah, in some sense, you're right. It is like a kind of a mea couple of, well, I guess we kind of messed up here because we didn't actually do a good thing by destroying what was kind of working and replacing it with something that wasn't paving the way for something that, that, that is worse, but it's still a denial to understand like a core part of humanity that isn't going away. And in the end, that is far more of a failure than being like, Oh, well the book said so, so I'm going to be a good person. It, it's definitely a product of their liberal ideology. Uh, it makes them very blind to, um, well, the reality of the world, and I think that this is just something you can see honestly with all liberals, um, it, because it's based on faulty presuppositions of a universal man. Then everything essentially boils down to that. Where again, he he thought that okay, let, let let's assume that uh, David's a hundred and twenty IQ, uh, so he's a smart guy and he wants to improve humanity, which I'm sure he did, and therefore assuming that everyone could be like him is just not fair actually it's like you said it's a denial of human nature and so grug is actually correct when he says no i need god and i don't care Uh, i'm not going to listen to your you know namby pamby uh arguments i'm going to church uh grug is actually correct whereas the 120 iq uh skeptic is wrong there and it, there, there is something mildly amusing about it. I tell you, the, uh, the religious folks must be enjoying this quite a lot. Um, it's it's weird eating crow about these things as a former liberal and new atheist. Um, but uh, no, no, the, 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 the bell curve meme is correct, basically. It's real, right? The, the Aquinas and Grug coming to a harmony on a point, that means that point is probably true. Yeah, and, and to be clear, like, uh, I mean, it's it's always nice to have someone say, yeah, okay, this was right. But th- that's not the point, uh, you know, yeah. here. The the point is simply, I hear, I'm hear i hearing a lot of what you're saying from a lot of people. And that's a great step forward. That realization, that understanding, I think is really essential. But I'm also hearing a lot of people um, who are kind of in the, I didn't leave the left, left me camp, uh, say like, but we can't recognize that like actually we do need this stuff we, we have to pretend like okay we made a tactical error somewhere there was yeah. a you know we, we 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 drew the lines in the wrong place but if we could just roll it back 10 years and do it all again we could probably throw up enough barriers to keep people from pretending that men can become women and it would all be fine at the end of the day well, I mean, it would be nice to close the door after the horse has bolted, right? Right, right. But uh, it's way too late for that. And, I mean, it, 
I, I think that an argument could be made that it would be nice to return to Fresh Prince, uh, but I don't think it's going to happen. And sure. I don't really see, given the framework that already existed even then, how we would prevent another intersectional uh, and comprehensive liberalism from merely arising. It's, uh, it kind of feels like an inevitability out of the logical premises that have been assumed. And really, all you're doing is waiting for a monster like this to come up and start devouring everything. So... But I, I, I hear what you're saying, and I think you are hitting on a point, which is a lot of the rationalist skeptic types, I think, are going to have trouble admitting that actually being on this road is the problem, and choosing a different path is actually a necessary one, uh, because essentially it's going to undo all of their life's work. And that's not an easy thing to have to admit that you're going to do. 